Amen, saints. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Glorify his holy name. Glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Let us all stand. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Come on, choir. Let's sing to the Lord.
Thanksgiving, we've had four deaths in our family. And we've been dealing with that. But I come this morning with Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. If I could just use for a quick, brief subject of how to accept love. Sometimes it's much easier to love someone than allow someone to love us. Uh -huh. Having someone love us puts us at a disadvantage. Mm. Why? Because then we must allow that person to do something for us. Mm. Then we become dependent on that person. We start feeling some kind of way of being beholden to that person. Mm. It's a prideful position to be in. Allowing ourselves to be loved means believing that we deserve to be loved. Mm. But what is most essential here is that we allow God to love us. Mm -hmm. Some people miss this crucial point. See, some don't believe that they're deserving of God's love or his mercy. Hmm? It is difficult to accept this gift of grace. Oh, but if you remember, now it is faith alone that allows us to be believe that. Uh -huh. Even if we are undeserving, God will love us anyway. Yeah. When we accept this undeserving gift of love, then we can truly learn to love ourselves and others. For Christ Jesus is the true gift of love. So I ask you this morning, Mount Calvary Saints and friends, to store in the repositories of your heart and meditate on Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. So remember, Jesus can give you love. He can give you peace and he can restore you. Whatever your situation may be, remember, prayer is having an honest conversation with God. So loving mankind is fine. But in Christ Jesus is the most supreme love or supreme thing you can ever have. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. This morning I will just uh, look at briefly the word renovation. Renovation means you got to change some things. And Paul, in his writing, began to say, forget about Amen. the things that lie behind and press on to the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. When I saw the word renovation, we renovate our houses and we go to our jobs and we have renovations and our lungs we renovate. That's right, but then there comes a time when we have to renovate our soul. And Paul said, forget about the thing that lies behind. Forget about the slander people have said. Forget about the knife that was stuck in your back. Forget about the pain people that tried to tear you down. And then he comes with the clincher and he said, press on. Press on. Press on to the rock of God the high calling in Christ Jesus. And I find myself this morning. I got to keep pressing on. Pressing on. Welcome way. You will hide something in every day. I might not look like much, but I'm still pressing on. I might not sound like it, but I'm still pressing on. I gotta press. I gotta press. I gotta press on through the storm, through the rain, through the sickness, through the pain. I have some heartache, but the Lord is my people. And I promise him, I'm going to press on in spite of everything. I'm going to press on because I've been rejuvenated. I'm renovating my life every day to the Lord have his way. Amen. I want to give God some praise. The ministers have encouraged us this morning. Hallelujah. And we're going to keep on praising him and we're going to bring the choir back and have them to keep up the spirit and let's keep praising God. Let's keep giving him glory. Amen. Come on, choir. Let's praise the Lord again.
Believing to receiving. As I said, it seems that the Spirit of God has already talked around this subject of faith and believing this morning. So following his lead, I want to come with the subject believing to receiving. We see in this text here that Mark gives us a picture of how Jesus operated. And how that whenever he was on the Mount of Transfiguration away from the people and all that took place there, then he coming down from the mountain with his disciples. And Jesus noticing a large crowd, as the Bible says. Something's going on. Something's happening down here. Saw the crowd arguing with his disciples about something, which Jesus was later to understand what it is or what it was. But when we look at this text from the point of view of the Father, how he got up that morning and said, I need to take this boy to get some help. Mm -hmm. He apparently, as a father, had witnessed his son all the way from growing up up until the point he decided he'd do something else. His son being tormented. Thrown in the fire, thrown in water, falling down, having convulsions, seizures, all kinds of things. Right. Enough to really just scare a parent. Yes. But more than that, it just wears a parent out mm -hmm. to always have to be on guard and watch yeah. your child. Mm -hmm. To wonder what's happening with them now, yeah. where they are, what their future going to look like. Um, I'm sure it just wears on you after a period of time. And then over time, you just start to feel helpless in a sense. And this man, like any parent, decided that I need to do something to help my child. In his mind, when he left home, he said, I need to get to Jesus. You know, if I really was preaching another subject around this, I would simply say, you got to turn your children over to God. But I want to focus on believing to receiving. Yes. When he got up and he made his mind up and said, I want to take my child to Jesus to be healed. He was moving in believing. Come on believing that if he could just get yeah, to Jesus. If I can just get this boy to church. <laughs> if I can just get to Jesus. I know he'll be all right. Yeah. Almost like the woman with the issue. If I can just touch, boy, if I can just get there. Come on now. Come on now. I, 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 if I can just, if I can just get there, I know, boy, things are gonna be good. It's gonna be all right. But he, he left me believing, and he walked. I don't know how many miles. You see, the thing about believing is not a one-time act. It's a thing you continuously have to do over and over and over and over. Every step is a step of believing. Every step is a step of believing. Because once you stop believing, you start saying, maybe I need to just turn around. Maybe, maybe I don't need to go and see Jesus. Maybe I just, I, I don't need to bother him right now. Maybe I don't need to get him to church. Maybe next Sunday. Maybe next week. Maybe what? Well, but, but believing is moving and being fully persuaded that I got to get to the Lord. And ain't nothing going to stop me from getting there. This man, not sure how many miles he walked, but I know he was coming up to where he heard Jesus was. And all of a sudden, he got surrounded by crowd. He stopped. And his disciples says, I need to get this boy healed. And apparently the disciples, according to the story, tried their best, but they couldn't do nothing. That's enough right there to turn you around. <laughs> I took it to the deacon. And the deacon couldn't help him. I took it to the pastor. And the pastor couldn't help him. Boy, sometimes we put too much faith in man. Sometimes we, we break man down with what only God can do. Oh, somebody ought to shout right there. Uh, I, I reminded of when, when, I believe it was, uh, might have been Rachel. Give me a 
child. And I, I remind her husband and said, I am our God. <laughs> I can't give you something, but only God can do it. See, sometimes we put too, many, too much stress on man and forget about God. But believing carries a few components to it. Uh, not only just asking to be healed, but also seeking out your healing. You see, most of us, we still by the bedside asking God for a job, but yet we refuse to go down and do an interview. See, that, that's not believing. See, that's not believing right there. You see, belief has a component of asking God and saying, Lord, I need a job. But then seeking out wherever God might have that job for you. You know, you know some of us say, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. Well, I, I, I'll just wait. You see, you got to take what God gives you. See, when you ask God for something, you got to get up and go look for what God might have it for you to get. Believing has another component. Jesus talked about knocking, see? He talked about believing had three components, asking, seeking, and knocking. Knocking is getting out just shaking the bush. Trying to figure out where God put my blessing. See, you already believing that God got your blessing, yeah. and you're out there looking for your blessing because you know God got it somewhere. But I'll knock on every door, I'll knock on every post, I'll figure out where God got my blessing. I'm not doubting that God's got a blessing. I just know it's out there somewhere. I need to get to the blessing that God has for me. Some of you might be sick, and you've been praying. Well, God's got a doctor for you out there. You just need to get to him. Now, so the man, he, uh, he done went to the crowd. The disciples couldn't do nothing. Finally, he comes to Jesus. Jesus, if you can, do something. If you can, heal my child. That's strange. You don't walk all from home. Then walk through the rain. Yes, yes, yes. They get everything and you get up there and say, if you can. Oh, it, it seems like the man is doubting the power of God. But you'd be wrong. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you why. All right. You see, the second half of believing in receiving is that your faith is not complete. Until it is fulfilled. Come on. Come on. Oh, you can get on now. See, it ain't no use in believing yeah. if you never receive it. Right. You probably believe in the wrong way or the wrong stuff. But your believing it comes to receiving and it's not complete until it is fulfilled. Come on now. Yes. Take a chance. I was a young boy, my, my grandfather used to have a wood ruler. And back then, those wooden rulers would fold up. That's right. And you would unfold. Click, 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 click. Mm -hmm. Oh, we love playing with it. Couldn't measure nothing. Uh -huh. <laughs> but the, fold, the, the, the ruler is designed to measure the length, the height, or the width of whatever you measure. That's right. That's its design. Mm -hmm. It doesn't create width, width, and height, it is there to measure it. Also, if you watch any of these pilot movies, they got these telescopes, mm -hmm. and they would bring them out. <laughs> and the farther the telescope would go out, the clearer the picture would come up. And they would be able to see at a long distance. The telescope didn't create the image, it only brought it into view. Yeah. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. See, your believing doesn't create what it is to happen but it just brings it into oh, yeah. it just brings it into view of seeing what you believe in is about ready to happen. The man said, Lord, I believe, but I got an issue. What is that, mister? I went to the crowd, they couldn't do nothing. I went to your disciples, they couldn't do nothing. Jesus, I'm standing here. My faith has not been uh, consummated. It's not been rewarded. I believe, but Complete my faith, God. Some of you are 
believe it. You got to believe until you receive. Because once you receive it, you know that you know that God is a miracle worker. You know that he's good. But you got to keep the faith. This young man, he was simply telling God, God, I got belief. But it ain't complete yet. Yeah. You see, most of us know that what we're going through, we trust in God. We believe in God. Yeah. But we ain't seen the manifestation yet. Yeah. The book of Hebrews said the people of old died in faith. But before they died, they saw it from afar off. And when they saw it, they lined their life up with it. And they said, guess what? I'm a stranger in this place. Everybody By your word, dear Lord God, we are stood in the way, in the path of the Lord. Please, Lord, continue to guide us by your word. Because the word says, it is a light unto our feet. Oh, thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for all that you have done. May you continue to bless your people, bless the house of faith, bless those, Lord, that seek you on a day-to-day -day basis. We thank you in Jesus' name. Let the church raise its right hand to God and say, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Go in peace, serve the Lord.